college and mentors, big brothers, or teaches someone who doesn't look like them. These personal experiences are the web that intertwines, that makes us the fabric that this beautiful republic promised to be. So if I'm going to give any advice to any college, it is to create a program in which students get extra credit, get monetary credit, get any type of thing that helps it be easier to be a student so that they can leave campus, find a high school that's in dire need, I mean a high school that's fucking up in test scores, kids are flunking out, kids are dropping out, and put one student with one student, for, and start that student in 8th and ninth grade, <coughs> and go with that student all the way to 12th grade. And I guarantee you, if you're just showing interest in that child's life, if you're helping that child, I don't mean buying that child gifts, because I don't mandate that. You shouldn't buy them gifts, you shouldn't take them out, don't run them to Six Flags, you know, any of that. Do the basics. Be a friend. Listen to that child. Communicate with that child. If you're doing that, you're going to produce something that's better for that child's community and something that's going to make a campus more diverse. And that's what I think. Interpersonal relationships <coughs> create the web that really creates systemic change in our society. Um, programs or colleges telling you to are, are not. But it's good that they provide an opportunity for that to happen. Yes, sir, the pink iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to your, your first uh, answer, how do you foster that culture? And specifically, I wanted to ask you, you know, you've, uh, uh, you're going to be talking about white privilege. You've talked about that in your lyrics before. Um, I don't talk do about that a lot, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's just a cue word. How do you... Uh, you know, again, like, how do you foster it so, you know, there's more prominent uh, rap bloggers, there's more writers for Rolling Stone who aren't just, uh, you know, white hipsters from, from Brooklyn? Man, they're good, they're good writers out there, you know? I think that, um, unfortunately, people aren't reading as much, period. <laughs> you know, right. we need, um, and uh, it seems that the people who can't read have the most popular blogs. <laughs> but, like, that guy doesn't like me. But I, um... You may, not, you may not be a young minority who's bright and getting the right for the Rolling Stone. My question is, what are you going to create? You know, what are you going to create? At, at, at a certain point, the Rolling Stone was a rag magazine that some older magazine laughed at. You know, the Source magazine at its height was started right over at Harvard. Source magazine at its height was one of the most powerful magazines I ever read as a child because it had music, right, it had culture, and it had politics. So I was informed politically as a child. I'm 14, 15 years old, I'm reading the magazine and I'm reading about the Brazilian youth, um, youth constitution in, in the source. You know, I was in Atlanta organizing with a group of kids called Kids for Change. We partnered with adults. We organized on the behalf of kids against police, police brutality. This is in 90, 90, 91, 92, 93. We were organizing then. We didn't realize that there was another group of kids on Mission Street in San Francisco called RISE, Raising Youth for Social Equality. And we both had systems that were based on a Brazilian style um, or, of organizing street children there who were being murdered by police. Now, we didn't know. We came up with that. It was RISE directly patterned itself after that. But it was only because, um, it was only because we got introduced that I knew that there was a bigger world and there were other kids who thought, who thought like that. So, you know, you know for, for me, man, it, it's about partnering with the people who are most in need of help. It's not about solving it and doing it for them. So if you're a writer and the Rolling Stone won't have you, what are you going to create? What are you going to create to make sure that the message that you have still gets out? Eric Nielsen came to me. Eric Nielsen is a doctor. He's a professor at um, University of Virginia. Eric uh, is passionate about... Um, rappers' rights in terms of rappers, amateur rappers, um, in one case we made to the Supreme Court, but amateur rappers are being prosecuted for shit they rap. Like, man, I'm the, I'm the son of a police officer. I have rapped about shootouts with the police. I have rapped about police chases. The shit I rap about, I should be locked up for. I've never been to jail in my life. And that isn't to say, hey, I'm not real, it's not real what I'm saying. What I'm saying is real in the imagination that I want you to see a movie, I want you to see a story. I want you to see a movie like I watched The Departed, like, wow. But I don't think Jack Nicholson, Whitey Bulger, you know? So who's going to be the writer to come up to finally show the world that this is what we're doing and this is the alternative to